I am super excited about today's tasting. We're diving into the wonderful world of Pilsner. Pilsner Urkel is the OG Pilsner. Originally brewed in the early 1800s and gave rise to the style itself in Pilsen in the Czech Republic. Very much marked by its use of Saz hops, which are grown in nearby Zatek, and truly a unique original beer that gave rise to every other beer in this tasting. Radeberger Pils is the original German Pils, which is obviously based on Pilsner Urkel, but it lays claim to being the original German style Pilsner from which every other Pilsner in Germany was essentially modeled. Rothhaus Pils is the baby of the tasting. I think it's the youngest. It's only been around for about 50 or 60 years, which is pretty cool. It's a relative novice in terms of the samples that we have in front of us. Bitburger is near and dear to my heart. When I was a young up and coming brewer in 2016, we were at Craft Brewers Conference and I had the pleasure to meet Jan Nivad Ninsansky, who is, I believe, the seventh generation owner and operator of the Bitburger Brewery. At the time, I was a young, maybe slightly sure of himself brewer who thought that, you know, scale and automation were dirty words. And when I spoke to Jan, and he spoke with extraordinary passion about producing this beer at scale consistently and repeatedly, I was very inspired with the idea, not only of brewing our own Pilsner, but also wanting to make our beer incredibly consistent and at scale. So thank you, Jan, for being very impressionable to me at a young age at just the right point in time. What is Pilsner? It's a light in color, clear, modestly bitter lager that happens to be hopped between 30 and 35 IBUs. Pilsner is a pure beer that has very tight bounds that describe what it is. It's important to remember that every Pilsner is a lager, but not every lager is a Pilsner. An attribute of Pilsen, and the reason that Pilsner came to be, is that particular city has extraordinarily soft water and soft water as a base for Pilsner, creating a really clean body and structure, is why Pilsner exists in many ways. Low minerality and very clean. In addition to that, a certain high level of hoppiness is also desirable. So contrary to American light lagers, which are somewhat sweet and unbitter, these particular lagers, Pilsners, have more hop character and a more pronounced bitterness. In front of me, the boys have prepared six samples of the beers that you saw in the introduction. I don't know which ones they are. They have certainly been randomized. If they did their job, they know which one is which. And the viewer will see which one I'm drinking. As I drink it, I'm gonna provide my feedback. I'm gonna go through these guys a few times. I'm gonna rank them one through six, and I'm obviously gonna pick a favorite. Let's dive right in. Sample number one. Oh, I'm so glad that we're on Pilsner. Everything's a bit more aromatic. Everything's a bit more clean and punchy. Definitely some noble hop variety going on. Of the Hallertau variety, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some more hop character. A little more bitter on the palate. A little bit floral, a little bit earthy. It's great, sample number one. Moving on to sample number two, which visually is a bit more darker in appearance than the five other that we have amongst us. Oh, baby. I'll be honest, I think I'm picking up a little bit of diacetyl in this guy. But I'm also getting some spicy noble hops. Mm. 
decent. Not much on the flavor profile from a diacetyl perspective. Nice, really super clean, a little bit of malt character, dry, earthy noble hops, really refreshing. I like this guy a lot. Sample number four. Another nice one. Punchy, uh, these hops come across as a bit more floral and a bit more fruity, whereas this guy came across as a bit more earthy and maybe a bit softer on this guy. This guy number three had a lot of bitterness and this sample number four is a bit softer even though it has punchy hop character. Sample number five. I should say normally you wouldn't drink these beers in a tiku, you drink them in a mug and you drink them by the liter but for the purposes of my own preference and trying to glean what I enjoy from these beers, the tiku is very advantageous to me because it funnels the flavor and aroma right into my palate. <clears throat> really nice, the, the hop character in this guy comes across as less flavorful and a bit more on the bitter side. And sample number six. A little bit of fruity hop character. A little bit of apple acetaldehyde going on, which is frankly the first flaw that I've experienced aside from the diacetyl in any of these. Comes across as a tiny bit metallic as well. I'm really splitting hairs. These are all excellent beers. I'm picking out the most minute of flaws. This guy has a bit more aged hop character going on, so it's always hard to say what the condition of the beer is that we're drinking, but long story short, not bad. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> this is tough. Ugh. I mean, I'm not even entirely sure how to go about this because these three were very same-ish to me. These two were definitely standouts, and this one was kind of unassuming as my first sample bias. But I do want to go through them again. Bear with me. I think I know which one this is, and I think it's not in premium condition. At least I hope it's not. Why don't I put my yeses forward? So far. All right, we're halfway there. I've got my top three, and then I have my bottom three. How do we want to go about this? Do we want to... Do you want to know what your top three are or your bottom three are? I think I want to guess. <laughs> I think I want to attempt to guess. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Uh, I want to start from the ones that I think I know what they are. This is the Pilsner Urkel. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Uh, and it's really unfortunate because I know this beer when it's good and fresh, and this is a bad example of it. The fact that I picked up Diacetyl was troubling. Clearly a different hop character than all the rest. Clearly a Saz hop character, but not my favorite example of Pilsner Urkel. I think that this is the Weinstefan. <laughs> You're right. I think... Give me a second. Okay. Um, this is the Roth House. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is intense. Uh, okay. I know. I know that Bitburger has a more earthy hop character to it. 
and the Rataburger is a bit softer. Bitburger. Oh, no! Okay, 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 okay. Keep it together, Nate. Rataburger. Oh, that's killer. This was the Rothhouse, these are my only two left. Yep. I don't even remember. What is it? Yep. Polliner and Bitburger? Yep. This is the Polliner, this is the Bitburger. No? No. Ugh. Swapped. You got three pushed out. So you gotta pick a number one out of those three. I'm not going to though, because yeah. in going through these, I changed my mind as we were as we were continuing to sample right then. I believe it's a Hallertau character that's in the Rataburger, and it's electric. This beer is presenting beautifully right now, especially as these guys warm up. This is dry, soft, and the, the fresh hop character, fresh noble hop character in this particular beer right now is popping out of the glass. Really, really digging on it. I usually get that from Bitburger, which is why I thought it was Bitburger. Long story short, I'm really digging on this guy right now. Rothhaus presents as nice, but somehow lacking. Whoa, hold on, hold on. If that's presenting, why didn't you push it forward? Because I changed my mind. For some reason, when I was trying to guess what they were, this started to pop out of the glass on me. Okay. This has a little bit of skunkiness going on, which is knocking it down a, a bit in my book right now. This is the Bitburger. Correct. So I ranked them, the Rataburger was my favorite, the Bitburger was my second favorite, Polliner was my third favorite, Rothhouse is my fourth favorite. Weinstefan number five, very unassuming, kind of lacking in hop character, so for it to land at number five is very unfortunate. And then last but not least, the Pilsner Kelly just presented really poorly in this tasting. So I have to pick it as my number six. This was a lot of fun. It was hard. All these beers presented spectacularly. Any critical feedback that I had was splitting hairs. One thing is for sure, you can't go wrong with any of these beers. If you haven't tried them and you're fans of the channel, I would encourage you to do so and get yourself into the wide, wonderful world of Pilsner. I wanna thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time.